Hello, I'm Sam Dickerson. I am the DRE at Chalice UU Fellowship out in Newberry Park, California. Welcome to our Soul Matters Leader Lab for October with the theme of courage. Courage, we're bringing our courage in. Uh, Katie is not available, so I am here to share uh, her recording for the month and I have the amazing Jenny with me our golden team here, yes. <laughs> and uh, I'm just gonna kick it off and I will share my screen and we'll listen to Katie's awesomeness for the month of October. After I go ahead and share my screen. <laughs> All righty, here we go. Hi everybody, this is Katie and I'm away this week. So thank you to Sam for hosting the Leaders Lab. I thought I'd go through the five sessions of courage for October that we have in our packet. The first is the many paths of courage. That's sort of an introduction overview session. The second is wholehearted courage. The third is personal courage, doing hard things. The fourth is social courage. And the fifth is Halloween courage. We have a little note about why we encourage you not to do Dia de los Muertos if you don't have Hispanics or Latinx members in your congregation. That becomes cultural appropriation. And you might, might, might want to read the um, information about that in the link. So session one, the many paths of courage. My approach is that it's not just superheroes that are courageous and brave. And so that reflects in the um, wonder box that it's not just superheroes, but there's small acts of courage that we can do. I encourage you to look to your congregation for people to interview who have done something courageous. Uh, for instance, in my experience, I had a man who was a Vietnam vet come and talk about what it was like being 18 uh, and the kinds of things he had to do walking across a rice paddy and being shot at. Um, session two is being yourself, courage to be yourself wholehearted courage. This is a, a wonderful program Brene Brown brings to us saying pretty much we are imperfect, we are vulnerable, but at the end of the day we are also worthy of love and we are brave. And isn't that a good message for you use? I think if there's anything we slide into being perfectionists because of our idealism, and it's nice to know that everyone is imperfect and everyone is broken hearted. And at the same time, we are worthy of love. And that directly feeds into our first principle, the inherent worth and dignity of each person. Our wonderful Widening the Circle research team brought a book by Supreme Court Justice Sonia Sotomayor called Be Brave, Be Different, Be You. It's some of her childhood experiences, and it's the perfect book. I recommend it for this idea of being yourself. The third session, there's three, is on personal courage. That's the lens of doing hard things. It might be simple, like just eating a new food and trying something new. Um, in the explore it section i reminisce about the zoo room at our day camp that we ran for many years 12 years and the zoo room was where people could bring in their friendly caged pets and of course we had gerbils and hamsters and guinea pigs and a rabbit or two but in addition we had snakes a hissing cockroach and other lizards and things, which did take some courage to look at and 
it was great for the children to explore what hard thing would they like to try would they like to try holding it and we had the um, local butterfly pavilion come and they had rosie the tarantula and did you feel comfortable holding it and if not that's fine look at the tarantula it's a good way to explore doing hard things because there's a spectrum of what you're comfortable with um, I also suggest matches. This is based on a little girl who was terrified of matches and lighting the chalice. And by the end of the year, she would strike a match and I got those big long safety matches too. Um, actually the real long ones. And light the chalice to overcome her fear. That was an example of doing something hard. And April Rosario, our wonderful middle school youth director for Soul Matters now, has a doing hard things bingo game in that explore session section for that session. All right, the fourth one is social change, the courage um, to do social courage to do social change. This is a time when I suggest you try to um integrate with what your congregational justice projects are because so often re is in its own silo isn't it and so you have to reinvent a justice project you have to reinvent a music project why not find out what your social justice people are doing and somehow integrate the children with that for us it used to be the crop walk that happened every Sunday after church for multiple churches. It was an interfaith crop walk. In addition, this is a time to highlight the banners that your church may have up. It might be a rainbow flag. It might be a Black Lives Matter banner and tell the story of that. And then I always go back to fair trade chocolate just because it's such a good tasting thing. And the children perk right up when you say we're going to do something social justice and fair trade chocolate so those are the suggestions for that one social change the last one the fifth one is halloween courage it is halloween and the message i would love for us to share with children is that our congregation is a safe place to explore fears and courage I was one of those little girls in California that was petrified of the scary haunted house down the street that the high school boys had set up. I wouldn't go near it. There are other kids who love that and would like to crawl through any haunted house that comes across their path. Once again, recognizing the differences in people and allowing people to be themselves. That's why we want to be a safe place to explore your fears. One of the beautiful parts of Halloween at the congregations I've served, we had a Halloween pumpkin carving. And at the end, after all the pumpkins were lit, we turned off the lights and had a pumpkin glow. That's where all of the pumpkins are glowing in front of you. And oftentimes we'd have a dance. So, you know, the dance like an Egyptian and the Frankenstein silly dances and the kids would just dance around in front of those glowing pumpkins. And we always sang this little light of mine. I just love those times. We created a haunted house in several congregations. And it was as simple as some refrigerator boxes to crawl through with little holes so that somebody could reach in and grab you. But what we did to acknowledge everyone's spectrum of fear is at the beginning of crawling through those boxes, you could say to the, and it was actually the fifth, sixth, and seventh graders who ran it, I want it not to be scary. And you just crawl through. And everyone promised it wouldn't be scary. And of course, then there were some kids who wanted it to be super scary, and then they grab them um, and have fun like that. Offer the choice to acknowledge people's 
fears and to make it a safe place. Finally, there's face painting, which is about as unscary as you can get. And that's another explore it. Um, I wanted to highlight in the message moments at the end of the packet, the story of Christopher Reeve. He was the actor who was paralyzed from the neck down in a um, horse accident. He fell off his horse. And he was the actor who portrayed Superman. There's a link to his lovely, lovely story about his courage to persevere. And I think that might make a nice segue for somebody's for all ages. Finally, there's the salt work table. This is our new section. And it's where I pull out the different things from each session that would work well in a fairly unsupervised salt work table, either in front of the sanctuary or in the back or in the side for all ages. So there's the acrostic puzzle. There's the faithful footprints that you can cut out. There's some garden art, accordion book instructions. There's worksheets on the heart, I can do hard things. And there's the not so scary boo book, which are all quieter, multi-age things you could do at a table if you have four kids or you have kids who wanna be in the sanctuary. So that is my overview of the October Courage Packet. And I turn you back over to Sam and wish you all a good month. Bye-bye, everybody. Okay. Thank you, Katie. Uh, <laughs> there's some cool stuff that she shared for October. And uh, it's just Jenny and I, so we can go back and forth and share our challenges and opportunities and some takeaways. I was taking notes on some of the takeaways because there's some neat stuff coming up. But um, let's start with some challenges. How are things going for you, Jenny? What challenges do you see coming up? Things are going, I feel pretty fortunate. Um, it was a lot of work over the summer, but um, I, I feel like I have enough RE leaders right now. Um, my challenge, which I expect a lot of us are feeling, um, is that what I'm supposed to do right now? Challenge? Yes. Yeah, challenges. Um, is that um, I really feel the weight of. Um, creating a brand new program. And normally in the summer and fall, it takes all the time and effort you can to just get prepared to continue the program that you've done from year to year with a few tweaks or maybe some innovations or things. Um, so it's a lot. And it won't all get done right now. And I want it all done yesterday. Um, my bulletin boards will not be up on Sunday. That was out of my control. I tried everything I could to get it done by then. And um, short of doing it myself, <laughs> every piece. So yeah, that's it's challenging. And, uh, you know, Somebody said, and whoever they were, I know I respected them and they are very wise. I just can't remember which wise one it was that said this, but we really should not expect, or we really should expect that it will take three years and it will be incremental and it'll be a little bit and a little bit more, and a little, but it'll probably take three years, which will then put us at five or six years after the beginning of the pandemic. And I can't even begin to imagine what the world's going to look like. <laughs> because so far, everything I've guessed in the last couple of years has been completely wrong. <laughs> so, 
every year we thought oh in january it'll look like this oh in september it'll look like this and every time it's like nope so that's my challenge right now patience 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 i hear you oh my gosh and i definitely i think every religious professional overseeing an re program is like raising their hand going yeah i'm not ready i'm not ready <laughs> i'm not ready i still have to do this and this and this and this and i know i'm in that boat as well i'm it's whether your program whether your program started the day of in gathering or the following sunday for me it's this coming sunday we had our in gathering me and too. yeah the official kickoff for our re program is this coming sunday it's the week leading up to it. And I'm like, I woke up an hour before my alarm went off this morning going, oh, geez, okay. <laughs> I'm ticking off things in my head and wait, no, no, okay, stop, shut off the brain, go back to sleep for another hour. You need your sleep if you're going to attempt half of the things that you're dreaming up. And that's that's my challenge right now is just to, I need to breathe through it and not everything is going to be done because I've also done the reimagining of what our program is going to look like and how it's set up. And it's, it's already taken a lot of energy and I'm like, okay, <laughs> pulling on the reserves, making sure I can get that final push and then have the headspace and the heart space to start it, start the program that I have dreamed up with good intentions, good energy, positive vibes. So, you know, positive feeds positive and, and I'm wanting other people to feed off of that positivity too. So it's, my nerves are on edge this week, very much on edge and, and realizing uh, with the help of my RE committee, we've had a few volunteers that have needed to step away. So it's like, oh, now I have some spots to fill in there. Great. Because that's like, that's chapter one in the book of RE is finding volunteers. <laughs> I, I, it is, I, I don't know if we've talked about this, but I really went, um, back and read, um, sustainable children's ministry that book i don't know if you've read that mm -mm. i read it over the summer it's um i can't even think of his name now but anyways it's called sustainable children's ministry and there are other pieces like a sustainable youth ministry and stuff but um it was really worthwhile going back and rereading because the first time i read it it was not necessarily all that act i mean it was but it's like oh yeah that'd be nice but this starts out with you need to start with your simple machines you need a volunteer recruitment machine you need a database machine and um you need a um it's out of my mind there's a third machine um of course um volunteer recruitment database oh and calendaring and you have to do that first and then it goes on and uses that same analogy i think that's the right word um to then move on to a little more complex machinery um and um it's been really good i mean so this summer it's been that wasn't it a joy to actually be able to calendar i, I have to say i just love my spreadsheet <laughs> So we can go over to opportunities with calendaring. <laughs> Absolutely. I love my spreadsheet. I will show it to anyone because it, it's a system I started years ago that keeps getting better. And um, I have used it in other congregations and it's, it's my calendaring, scheduling, linking, lesson linking. And it's just this beautiful complex machine that um, I now have my youth ministry coordinator working with me and on it and um and it has it's just beautiful 
<laughs> but it was so delightful to be able to calendar. I mean, quite honestly, I like to be able to do that in the summer. I like to plan the whole church year. Um, it is a challenge right at the moment because the music director is still trying to figure out what her calendaring is going to look like. And I have, um, I have teachers who are also in our folk orchestra and in our choir. So I have only been able to make it through the end of December, but um, with the actual schedule, there's a proposed schedule for the rest of the year. But um, but yeah, all the events and not all the events and OWL. So these are, uh, that's my opportunity. Is that it? Opportunities? We're on opportunities. Yeah. So the other opportunity that if you'd said we're doing opportunities, my opportunity I feel is that because you know this i'm new to this con i'm new to this congregation two years ago june of 20 so i'm still new to these people many of these people and we had an opportunity i did not run re during the summer i said i can't we had three events splash day during which it rained and it was cold so that's goes so well. <laughs> and then, <laughs> the stargazing night camp out went better it was clear we could see the stars very few people showed up but they were there whoever was there we had a good time and then we had a a last splash of summer picnic at a at an off-site place that was just great no one had ever been there before and it was a place i introduced them to and 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 we went swimming and, and all these things and had about 48 people all together um and it was for the whole congregation but anyways the opportunities that that gave is that we have been just working on these new families or returning families and i have families that I haven't that I've never met that are have registered for owl that maybe showed up for the last two weeks when we did we did a project um, for RE because school had already started so I wanted them to have RE so we did too and and some they're showing up and so I have these opportunities to begin to meet these people and get them to meet each other again that's the opportunity that's it's a challenge but it's a, getting the families to know each other again because it's not really about me it's about them so i'm excited we are doing all ages of owl this year and we decided to do it on sunday night and so the middle school starts the end of or beginning of october and they run through April and then January through either March or April, first and second grade and the fifth and sixth grade, all at the same time. And um, if there was enough interest, which it already appears there is, um, I will, we will also be doing parents and caregivers and sexuality educators all at the same time in the same building. I have with childcare. Someone asked me, so who's doing the child care? They asked me the other day. I said, I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. I've offered child care. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I know that song. <laughs> I know that song. I don't know. Me? I don't know. Not me. I'm going to be in the Parents of Sexuality Educators. I don't know. <laughs> someone, we will build it and someone will come. Exactly. Yeah. Honestly, I'll have Reverend Walter <laughs> to talk here if I have to. I, I can totally vibe with your opportunity of creating spaces and opportunities for the families to come back together. Um, we 
were opening up that space over the summer where uh, we've we've moved our RE hour, the, 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 the official programming to after service. Oh, wow. So that we've opened up our sanctuary to be as intergen as possible and to also allow our RE volunteers to be in service yeah. and to worship together and have their, their spirits um, filled and have their cups filled. But then, you know, well, what do the parents do? Well, you know what, they can socialize. So we opened up a room that is specifically for the parents to mingle and chat and talk. And if I have an opportunity, I can pop in and say, hey, and check in with them. And our minister can pop in and say, hey, how's it going? And um, creating those that, that opportunity to check in with each other and build up those relationships because it's not just important for the kids and the teens, it's equally as important for the parents and caregivers. Yes. To build up those relationships. And then at in gathering this past Sunday, it was seeing that just totally magnified. And I there were parents who, I mean, they should have been done and they can't stop hanging out over and under the shady trees and chatting and talking because well the kids are having a great time so you know what we're just gonna catch up and chat and meet and right. I saw you that one time hey what's going on and that was that's such a, a huge part of built not building community and maintaining community yeah. creating those bonds among the families and their bonds within the larger congregational yeah. community. It's, um, it was really cool. And then on top of that, seeing families come back that we haven't seen since the before times, yeah. that was huge. And even seeing a couple of new families mm -hmm. come around that I, our board president comes running up to me and gives me a big hug and goes, they're coming back, they're coming back. And, and, and her joy and enthusiasm is just absolutely lovely. And I laughed and, and I said, I knew they would. <laughs> we just have to give them time. And I feel like that's been the refrain through all of this is they've gone through traumas that majority of us cannot even fathom give them grace give them patience and we will have our arms and doors open to them whenever they are ready to return to being in person and I think that just that felt like a golden opportunity of hey we're open they're ready to come back and it wasn't, for me, it wasn't, I told you so. It was just like, well, yeah. <laughs> well, and I yeah. think this is a natural starting point. Mm -hmm. Whereas for us, we came back in person the 1st of March. That was not a natural starting point. So any of the people who had been away didn't come back. The people right. that we had seen in the various things came around over the you know that had been in zoom or who had then well, second year we didn't do zoom we did in-person stuff right up through november november well december's the outdoor solstice and then we didn't do anything in january and february because we were so busy with our building and it, nobody wanted to meet outside and nobody wanted to do zoom. So we're like, fine, but it wasn't a natural starting point. And right now I know people have said, we're trying to get back into some sort of routine and this is a natural starting point. And so I think, I think Very that's going to happen. Yeah. In my heart, there is always that. I know it's not true that as it's never been true that if people don't come, it's a reflection of my work. It's never really been true because I mean, I 
done a good job. Um, and sometimes people don't come. <laughs> and um, so, you know, that part where everybody's like, okay, let's see how she's doing her job. Are these people going to come back? And it's like, I'm just trying very hard to, to remind myself that that is not a reflection on me and me only, you know, right. um, it's hard to remember. And I say that right now, because hopefully if anybody's watching this, we all need to remember that, you know? So I want to say so many of us, but all of us that are in this position overseeing religious education programs since that first shutdown in March of 2020, we have scrambled, we have rethought, we have learned new ways, we have cried and cried and cried and, uh, and it's yelled unfortunate. and screamed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, there have been very unfortunate cases of people being let go and programs being paused or shuttered. And it's it's been incredibly, it's been heartbreaking and it's been stressful and it's been exhausting and overwhelming. It's forced us, and I had this talk with, with um, quite a few of our people in leadership with my congregation as change your perspective on engagement. Mm -hmm. It is no longer a numbers game. And let's see this as an opportunity as well. It's not a numbers game anymore because we have our in-person services and our virtual services. We have our RE programs, we have special events, we have groups and activities that don't look like what we had in the before times. Mm -hmm. So pull away from the numbers. Oh, we only had so many kids show up this morning for, for RE or sh their families show up in, showing up in worship. Did they come virtually? Did, are, are they not able to show up Sunday mornings, but they show up to that Friday night event faithfully every month? Um, they're, they're, the kid is wanting to participate in this one online group while their parents are participating in this other group. They're showing up. So, and, and, all of these opportunities that we've put out there for them, it's taken the pressure off of our families that they have to be here every Sunday okay. mm -hmm. when they can't. Well, and, and trying, you know, for example, like I was telling you about what we're doing with OWL this year, that's going to be a lot of people on Sunday night at 4 30. Yep. A lot of people. And by the time we get to January and we're running three owl classes plus a parents class plus childcare. Um and what's that gonna look make Sunday morning look like? I don't know. But we couldn't do owl on Sunday morning. We had to do it in the evening like this. Um, so I don't know, and maybe it will be, I, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. I, I, I can't predict. I just know that's what we have to do. And Sunday night is the best time to be able to try late afternoon and evening is the best time to try and be able to get, it's the most likely time that those middle schoolers don't have anything else going on, you know, and so they that's it's it's when we can get the the largest critical mass of middle schoolers is in the late afternoon and evening on Sundays and so you know um we are going to try something else too which um 
it's going to be interesting, which is an opportunity again <laughs> to get families connected. Um, so I was trying to think about, I took family ministry training this summer. And so during that time, um, the, I guess it's not really a REN mod, but um, during that time, you know, just always thinking about this engagement, which I think is a really good word to start using more in our congregations, you know. Um, I like that I see some people that are, you know, you've got directors of engagement and things like that instead of membership coordinator or, you know, whatever. But anyways, um, so what came out of that uh, training for me was wanting to come up with something doable that I could implement this year. Um, and so I said, well, what is it that keeps people from coming on Sunday morning? What keeps a family from coming? Well, okay. You have, your children need to be dressed. <laughs> they need to be fed. You need coffee or tea or whatever is your 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 thing and then you have to have the motivation to on that one morning a week that you really don't quote have to be somewhere which is a whole nother story about priorities, <laughs> and, priorities and children's busy and families busy lives but um and you know maybe you could just sit on the sofa and watch the surface uh, the service online or you could um you know listen to krista tippett on on being and that's just as good or better than whatever your minister is going to talk about this week <laughs> and so so what are these are barriers i saw I these three barriers so i said okay well how can we what can we do with that so i said okay once a month, I would love to do it every Sunday, but we'll start out once a month. We're going to have, I've decided just to call it PJ Sunday. And, and um, the, in the time, like the hour before the worship service, um, families come, kids go in one place and they get breakfast. Parents go and caregivers go in another place where they get their coffee or their tea, a check-in question, a very brief kind of small group ministry type of experience where they can check in with each other, but semi-facilitated. So check-in question, you know, and then, um, and they, in our, our place, they're going to stay in, in, in the sanctuary. We, it's our fellowship hall too, but the parents will be in there. We'll, and the kids it's going to be, we're going to, I'm going to have cold cereals, supplies, and oatmeal with mix-ins available that whichever group decides to take charge of that that week, membership committee, whatever, it'll be easy for them to do. But if they want to go crazy and have pancakes, they can do that themselves. Then we will bring the kids down into the sanctuary where the adults are. We will have a very brief 15-minute family chapel. And then um, we will be up front where we already have our we worship area and we'll be up front and then there will be just music playing for 10 minutes so it'll be a musical interlude right into when the worship service starts and so they won't even have to leave they can just sit there as everybody comes in the sanctuary and um if your kids can't dress themselves they can wear their pajamas i got new pajamas so and <laughs> And I think that takes us right into our takeaways because I need to make notes on this because this is brilliant, Jenny. <laughs> so, and, and the reason we put the adults in the sanctuary to start out for their coffee is that we can, we can make the children move from the room they're in down into the sanctuary for the family chapel. It's harder to get the adults to come down. So they're already in place. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love this. So I would love to do it every Sunday. You know, um, just provide, I, I remember a church that um, always provided um, an oatmeal breakfast for their kids before church. Um, I don't know if they had, I think the Columbus church used to do that, Columbus, Ohio. I don't know if they still do. Um, and I just think it, it, it I don't know. So I'm hoping it, it, it offers some, you know, maybe that'll be the Sunday that more people come. I don't know. I think that's brilliant. It's, it's, I can, when, when we've asked people, um, you know, 
what's what's holding you back from coming to in-person services um, and preferring to do virtual, there's illness, health, that's, you know, top Stable. right up there. And that's a totally viable reason. One of the reasons why we have virtual services so that people who have COVID or the flu or pneumonia or whatever health issue is going on, or if they're at a higher risk during flu season, stay home, be safe, take care of yourself, be healthy. The other big reason is because I'm comfortable and don't want to get out of my pajamas. <laughs> and it, it really truly is for many families, the only morning out of the seven days of the week. Mm -hmm. And so our challenge, back to challenges, is our challenge as always is how is this meaningful enough offering what it is they're looking for, what they need or want to make it a priority? Mm -hmm. um, and, um, you know, you don't have a choice about whether your soccer kids' soccer team is a priority or not. You get told that right up front. Come to practice, you come to games. This isn't like you wake up in the morning and decide if you want to go or not, even at the youngest level, to be quite honest. Um, there, same thing if you're in a play or in a band or, you know, this you have to go. So you have to take your kids. But of course, church is not that way, other than in my OWL programs, it's that way. Um, yeah. But uh, it, well, it has to be that. So it has to be what is what are we have to really try very hard to understand and get the parents to hear each other about why do i want to be here why did i ever start coming in the first place and what are the barriers to being here and if they can hear each other and hear each other's common that's the other thing common what are the barriers um again that's their reconnecting and then they can we can hear that and reflect back and say so these are the things that you said were priorities and yes we all have to choose this is why you chose to come to this church and you've said it's not a priority right now and i've done that i mean so it's not a shaming it's more of a just recognize that you're choosing not to make it a priority right now yeah um you're choosing to make this other thing and remember why it's so important to you i think it's a good reflection exercise if you're in a in a, a trusted space um with people i'm working on those relationships right now because i'm new but. as we're redefining engagement in church culture in congregational culture we're redefining engagement mm -hmm. so oh my gosh i just lost my idea <laughs> i lost <laughs> my thought it fizzled out It'll come back. It's it's expanding the opportunities to families on meeting them where they're at, but also throwing out a few carrots to go, hey, you really enjoyed this. Come on over here and trying to, you know, there's there's a little bit of that push and pull that that goes on. And that's that's communicating with within our groups and hearing each other out and and being open to huh i never thought of trying that yeah like pj sundays i'm i have my re meeting this sunday so i need to throw that idea mm -hmm. out there. well and i think you know we because we have now you have a you know you i'm i like that the opportunity that you have that you have shifted to having um re after worship um, and, um, in this congregation prior to the pandemic and the renovation of the building, they were having two services. And so RE was kind of, I don't even know, cause I wasn't there. I didn't quite understand how it worked out, but, um, anyways, it was happening at the same time as some service. I don't know. And so, um, <clears throat> Um, we don't have that anymore because part of the reason for expanding the building was to go back to one service. So we're having RE at the same time, but we've also, um, 
uh, added, um, they were always had, I guess, or had had in the past once a month, a multi-generational worship service. I don't know what those look like. I have no idea. Um, I really like to do those. And we did a couple in the spring. I did a couple in the spring um, when we got back together. Um, they tend to be very different. I changed the order of, you know, I, I just do whatever because my marriage is like, okay, whatever you want to do. <laughs> and and um, so we just had our water. So we've decided this year that I didn't want to call them intergens and I didn't want to call them multi-generational be, um, for various reasons of which we all struggle with that multi-generational thing because honestly, not only should every worship, not only all generations are welcome at every service. We already say that. And when only one generation is leaving the room, it's still a multi-generational worship service. Yes. There's still two or three generations in the room, even if the children leave. So, um, you know, and so we've decided to call it, um, and we also want to make it so we can do things more differently. And so we've call it, we're calling it exploratory worship so that it does it's just an alternative and we didn't want to call it alternative because we're not giving you an alternative to not come <laughs> so okay i mean some people would choose not to but <clears throat> but it's one sunday a month of exploratory worship and um water communion was just that way so um love it. and there's no re on on exploratory worship sundays um so um, and we've put together a team with the minister, myself, the music director, and two um, congregants who, um, one is, is a Montessori teacher, but also a dancer. And um, the other, she's always been and is one of my storytellers and is very interested in, in trying different sorts of things. So we have our first meeting uh, next week. Um, because we did the minister and I and the music director did the water communion by ourselves, but um, yeah. I, I feel like this all ties into to October's theme of courage because we're <laughs> we're being bring it back. That's why they hired you for this job, Sam. <laughs> Bringing it back. I it's taken it's taken us professionals a lot of courage to step out of the RE Sunday box that we've all gotten super used to. And let's try this. Let's try this. And the courage to be okay with failure. Oh yeah. That well, we've failed so spectacularly over the last two years <laughs> over and over. It's kind of like, how bad could it be? I'm still here. <laughs> and my, my, my phrase has been throwing pasta at the wall. <laughs> I feel like I've gotten the UU Costco membership, just buying mounds of pasta every month. And my walls are covered with spaghetti and angel hair and bow tie and, and <laughs> rotellis and raviolis and God knows what else, because we had to. It's, we, it was either find something to grasp onto so we can step outside our comfort zones and test those really unknown kind of scary waters or watch our program disappear. And because we love what we do and we love the families we are working with and we love our congregations that we're part that we're a part of you know let's let's find those little bits of courage and amongst all of those failures, then we also have these like really beautiful points of light oh, with yeah. our PJ Sundays and our new programs and our parent groups and our special events. And okay, I'm going to grasp onto that. And we've been like building on those bits of courage to change things up in some really spectacular ways that we would not have done no. three years ago. No, I mean, not so, that we didn't, many of us want to do some of these things, but there was no, it was very difficult to, um, 
to run the program you're running and do innovation, especially because so many people don't work full time, myself included. And, um, and so, uh, and hard to gather in momentum, but I think I, I feel much more and courageous. I like that. I am willing to let things, um, go by the wayside if it doesn't turn out. I mean, you know, you got to give it a little time, Mm -hmm. but I don't see trying something and it not being, you know, something that we want to continue, you know, to put the energy into a failure, you know, because there's a multitude of opportunities out there. And so Mm -hmm. you can't know that again, again, yeah, that's, that's, that's taking those brave steps, not knowing what the outcome is going to be. Yeah. There's one of those weekends that, um, are in the packet that Katie pointed out on embracing the imperfection. And she and I talked about that. I was at that leader lab when we, yeah, I remember talking about that. It's, it's okay to let things go. We don't have to have everything absolutely perfect because mm-hmm. it's not real. It's, it's, it's something that we made up. It's perfectly acceptable to strive for a level of perfection, but to embrace <laughs> the imperfect, that some things are going to fall to the wayside and some things are not going to go the way we expect. And it's been such an awesome lesson in that. I, I want to, I'm, I'm looking at my notes and I'm like, I want to point out the, the bingo that April Rosario I have not had a chance to look at that yet, but that I can't um, wait to look at it because I love bingo (laughs) and the kids love bingo. So I'm super excited for that. The, um, the Sunday, uh, around social justice, it's right before the election. So I very much, our congregation's very big into you, you, the vote Okay, and to be able to bring that to light for some of our kids, I've, I've, I'm going, Oh, and there's some great books out there for children who are, you know, to show them that you can get involved, even though you, you're not 18 and you can't vote, you can still encourage people to register and, and encourage people to get out there and vote and wear your voting buttons and stickers and get be aware of what you're voting on, what council members are being voted into, and if there are any Senate races. And there's, there's nothing wrong with children becoming aware. So that, that pinged me. And I love, I can't remember which Sunday, I think it might've been during the holiday. Sunday is, yes, acknowledging other people's fears and saying, okay, and not pushing. I love that as someone who uh, lives with a very severe phobia of something that I'd rather not bring up at the moment, having someone acknowledge that extreme phobia for me and go, okay, I will support you with that. It's, it's something incredibly vulnerable to say, I have a fear of this, or I am not comfortable with this. And to have someone show loving kindness to say, okay, I've got your back. I'll help you. I'll take care of that for you or be with you as you're going through that fear or facing a particular phobia. I Without fixing. Exactly. I don't want you to fix it. I just need you to, you know, be my wing person yeah. and make sure that I will get through it. Okay. If I need help. Yeah. We are looking at, that's our exploratory worship, October 30th. Um, our working title is is be yourself in drag, but <laughs> it it because we Love were it. thinking about masks and having a mask making thing, and then we were thinking about having you know costumes available for people to dress up. And that we're not exactly we haven't met the whole team yet, but it the the idea really is um, that um, that in our community in this UU community, um, we have the support of each other to do some courageous things, which is showing up as who we truly are, which kind of goes awesome. a little bit to what you were saying and showing up as who we truly are. Um, or 
we actually and like i said we haven't or showing up because some people don't say it's who we truly are is showing up as the best that we want to be the best in ourselves you know i imagine like you know it's kind of cool when you go away to college like if you don't know anybody or you move into a new town because you get to shed if you choose all of those for example high school things about who you were in high school and you get a kind of a fresh slate you know and um and we were saying in our community it's one of those places where and certainly with our youth we we allow them to explore and 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 be courageous in 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 who they want um to be and i think we should allow i think all the adults know that that's what we do and it's part of the community as a community what we do for our youth but we do that for adults too we need to make sure adults understand that that that's who we are too you know that it's for them too they don't have to show up as they as they you know have always been or whatever so anyway that's okay. a I think that's a perfect spot to end our recording on showing <laughs> having the courage to show up as, as you are yeah. and shed the things that no longer suit you suit you right i appreciate this conversation jenny thank you so much thank you i do too it's always fun. and thank you to katie for for trusting me to um record this hour thank you thank you scott <laughs> <laughs> and we'll see you all next month <laughs>